Hello and welcome to the Borealis Experience. I'm your host Aurora, life coach and companion on this beautiful journey called life. I'm very happy, I'm very excited to be spending some time with you today. I hope you are relaxed, I hope you feel safe, I hope you feel good in your skin and if you don't feel good at the moment, if you feel stuck, if you feel sad, if you feel, I don't know, without a big mission, without any purpose, then I hope I can provide you with tools that bring you value and purpose and contentment. I'm very excited and so pumped because I just launched my coaching offer, my four-week coaching um, program and I had the first person signing up and I'm expecting many more people to sign up and to jump on this opportunity to discover themselves to know who they are what they are made of um, and yeah I'm just so incredibly happy to be getting to know people from all over the world on a deeper level and helping them out, um, sharing time and space with them. So if you feel you're ready, don't hesitate. Jump on that opportunity and shoot me a message on Facebook, um, Aurora Eggert on Facebook or The Borealis Experience on Instagram. Or you can also message the Aurora Eggert Coaching page on Facebook and um, let me know that you are interested to dive a little deeper, to make sense out of your mistakes, to make sense of yourself. Um, the better we know ourselves, the stronger individuals we can be and the better we can serve the people around us and just live a more content life. If you listen to my podcast, you have a growth growth mindset there's no doubt you are okay with having the mirror shown to you <laughs> you are okay to rest and reflect you're not a person who's trying to run away and escape anymore you want to get to the juicy parts of life and I'm so incredibly proud to be serving people like that I always dreamt about this I always wanted to be surrounded by warriors and goddesses who want to grow who want to learn from their mistakes and who are not living a life in victimhood victim mentality I just saw that my laptop needs juice <laughs> and in order for this episode to not be cut off I'm just gonna grab my charging cable here and plug my laptop into the power source. All right, let's begin. Today I want to talk about your blind spots. What are blind spots? <sighs> blind spots I would describe as behaviors, beliefs, um, the way that we show up in life, but are not aware of and um, those blind spots, if we start becoming aware of them, it's a very, let's say, humbling journey to be on because you had a certain image about yourself. You saw yourself a certain way. Uh, most people want to see themselves as a good person, as an intelligent person, as a beautiful person, as a person who serves other people and as a yeah valuable contribution to society. And in order to fit into that belief that we have created ourselves or that society has kind of made us create... We are not showing up authentically as ourselves. And the less we are aware of these blind spots, the harder it's going to be to relate to people on deeper levels. Of course, 
if you meet a person who has just as many blind spots as you have, they're just playing the very same game, then you can be kidding each other for the rest of your life and you'll be holding yourself in that space and everybody is going to be happy and content. But if you keep meeting people that, let's say, reject you, move away from you, um, leave you, um, don't want to have any business with you, um, if you keep having the same conflicts all over again, um, if, if you see your life as a circle of failures and you're just surviving instead of thriving like other people are doing, then there might be a big chance that you are not aware of how you behave. And the art is, I want to say that right away, is to not beat yourself up once you realize that you're doing this. Because you had to. It was a way to survive. It was a way to feel good. It was a way to belong. And belonging is absolutely critical when we are born, when we are children, when we are teenagers and even into adulthood. Although some people might claim that they are lone wolves. Yeah, dear person out there who claims to be a lone wolf, that was me for the longest time. But we all need each other. Look at your plate when you have lunch or dinner tonight and see how many people made it possible for you to have a fork and spoon in your hand, a glass of water or wine in front of you, a plate and food. This is thousands of people who made it possible for you to enjoy that meal. So we're all together in this. We all want to be dependent and independent to some degree um, but what I want to talk about today is um, the areas in our lives, the areas in ourselves that we don't quite want to see, but that make it impossible for us to succeed in life. If you don't address these blind spots, of course, you can force yourself to the top. You can read books. You can start becoming a new persona, a new identity But that will not be sustainable. You will fail and crash when time comes, when, when it will be too hard for you to maintain that false persona that you created. So why do we have blind spots? Why do we do this to ourselves? Uh, why don't we just be authentic and truthful with ourselves and with everybody around us? I strongly believe that we do this because from early on we are being taught that who we are, what we express is not perfectly in alignment with society. Maybe you were the child who's a little bit too loud, a little bit too excited, a little bit too um, physically active oh, well, that child probably has ADHD and let's cram some pills into their body because they have to be quiet and sit on a chair at school. You can see in my voice already how agitated I am because children are meant to be moving around. They are meant to run around and climb trees and discover nature and ask questions as much as they want to. They're not a cup that we need to fill They're not a little body that we have to force into sitting six to eight hours on a little chair that is uncomfortable as fuck. They're not made for that. They need to express themselves. They need to be free. They need to be encouraged. But what we do, how the system is still running nowadays, you got to fit in, you got to shut up, and you got to stop dreaming And just follow rules. Don't get me wrong here. Rules are there to protect us, to keep us in check. I get it. 
But when it comes to a child, when it comes to you and expressing yourself and you're not harming, threatening anybody, then for God's sakes, let children express themselves and let them be okay with that. Empower them. But we're not doing that as a society. We are suppressing, we are punishing, we are isolating people. Look at the prison system. Horrific how it's being dealt with here in the Northern American culture. So from an early age on, we learn that you have to behave a certain way. You have to have certain attributes to be wanted by people, be it the teacher's attention, your parents' attention, and later on your intimate partner's attention. Now let's stay with the romantic relationship because that's the easiest example. We as women, we're being taught that you got to look pretty, you got to have curves but not too many, you got to fit into certain clothing, you got to talk a certain way, you got to flatter your <laughs> your eyes a certain way and then you will be wanted. So, this guy over there is looking at you and wants you. He sees what you're offering. What he doesn't know, though, is that you pimped yourself up, that you made yourself look wanted, but it is not reflecting who you are. And you'll be able, if you get into a relationship with that guy, you will be able to sustain it for a little bit. Right? He will comment on your beauty, he will be excited, you will be excited, you'll have wonderful sex, awesome. Once relationship reality hits you though, and you realize, ah fuck, to wear makeup, to wear heels all day long is not really my type, I'm more the baggy pants, no makeup, messy hair kind of person, and I love to be seen for my sense of humor and my intelligence my ability to make money. Well, shit. Your partner picked you for your beauty and your grace and not for your intelligence and your money-making abilities. He doesn't give a shit about those attributes. Now, the big awakening comes after a couple of weeks, sometimes only a couple of months or years, when you decide to be yourself. And then your partner feels duped. He doesn't know who you really are. You're not really trustworthy because you were somebody else at the beginning and now you feel like you can't be yourself. Now, how can you be in that relationship now comfortable if you know that you have to put up that mask again that you were wearing at the beginning? That sounds like backwards. That sounds like stuck. That sounds like totally uninteresting. Not interesting at all. Oh, same goes for men. Let's say the man is very good looking, has a great job, is making lots of money. And uh, when he goes out, he always invites people. He has beautiful suits on. And um, yeah, that is him. He gets to know that lady who's very attracted to him, he's very attracted to her, and after a little while, he realizes, hmm, I made lots of time for that woman now, for that relationship. Um, I'm actually, yeah, very interested in pushing forward with my career, so I want to focus more on my career again and still be in the relationship, but maybe a little less um, time-consuming. All right, he removes himself a little bit from the relationship. Instead of seeing her five days a week, he can only see her once a week or twice a week. And um, yeah, conflicts start to arise. And all this because at the beginning, we decided to only show our pretty little face on one side, <laughs> but we didn't show up as ourselves because we were taught we are not enough we're not good how we are and if you show up as yourself on a first date you might as well 
go on a hike by yourself. Like you're not going to be asked on a date again if you show up as yourself. I know so many women women who were told this by their mother that, yeah, my God, how you got to lose a couple pounds. You got to read up on a couple books to be more intelligent. Otherwise, you'll never find a man. And those women learn to put on a mask. And same goes for men. I'm certain, 100% certain that same thing goes for men. Now, there's other blind spots out there. So, for instance, if your mother were was more absent than others, if you felt that she was focusing too much on work or on the other siblings, you create a certain image about yourself. You make conclusions about that behavior, about your mother's behavior. This is what children do. They don't make assumptions about other people because other people, especially the ones that they depend on, they're going to put on a pedestal and they're going to criticize themselves. I'm not enough. I don't get the attention from my mom because I'm whatever conclusion you made. All right. Fast forward into adulthood now. You start a relationship and... You picked a partner who is just as absent as your mom, emotionally totally unavailable, because that's what you're used to. Your mom is your first source of love, your caregiver, if you were adopted or didn't grow up with parents, the person who is closest to you when you grow up and cares for you. Now you're stuck with a person who's unavailable, who's kind of distant, and you don't really like it. Yet on the same side, you kind of are attracted to that because this is how you learned what love is. Now what we're going to do in our coaching sessions is that we're going to discover where did you start make assumptions about yourself, which assumptions are we going to question? Is this true? that you are a little worthless piece of meat. Is this really true, how you saw yourself when you were little? Especially if you saw yourself, yeah, small and meaningless. Well, let's question those beliefs and let's reframe them. Let's forgive our parents who made mistakes, who were not given a manual on how to raise us. And let's move on and let's finally connect with people that are so deserving of our love and that also treat us how we deserve to be treated. But first of all, you got to dig a little deeper and find out what are the beliefs that you are making up or that you made up in the past that you are still holding on to, but that we, that we can start questioning because they're holding you back they're keeping you stuck they're keeping you in a little box and you will keep attracting people that are a match to these beliefs and not to your true nature you are not your beliefs you just acquired them to survive but now it's time to thrive and to be in a position of power and not a victimhood anymore All right, I hope this episode was triggering to some degree and makes you think and makes you reflect about what you're bullshitting yourself about. And I will be out there very soon again, latest on Thursday. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for subscribing if you're a new listener. Thank you so much for reaching out, giving me feedback, especially on Apple Podcast. If you give me a five-star rating there, oh, it would mean the world to me. And if you are interested in my four-week program or eight-week week program, then reach out to me and I'll find out with you um, what is best for you, what you need and what you want to work on. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.